The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. Uh, we've got a lot to cover, folks. A lot of things going on today uh, in the currencies and also in the gold market. And, of course, stocks sold off just a little bit. Doesn't mean a whole lot right now, but uh, we will keep an eye on some of these. The first one we'll look at, of course, here is the German DAX. As you can see, we've been in a slight downtrend with a little negative bias with that Gartley that just finished just a few hours ago. And then if we take a look at the FTSE, uh, it is trying to complete a Gartley up here uh, very, very closely. So we'll see uh, how this is going to, to keep on uh, happening as we uh, go through the day today. Now, the number in that DAX is up about another 100 points. Excuse me, up another 100 points. Whether it gets there or not, you know, certainly remains to be seen. But we'll be watching it closely. I'll start to cover some of the U.S. stocks, but first uh, I wanted to um, talk just a little bit about Bitcoin. Uh, I want to just give you this chart here that's a very interesting chart from my good friend, Kerry Szymanski. And uh, it's a very nice chart showing the head and shoulders pattern that we had on Bitcoin over the past three weeks. So you can see the shoulder and the head. We're equal in distance apart. The right shoulder is the same size as the left shoulder. And we had that really good move up here, which completed that ABCD pattern up there at the $7,400 a share level. I got a real interesting email early this morning uh, from my good friend over in the UK. Uh, I was there uh, last year in May uh, to spend a week with him, and I was interviewed by uh, Trevor Neal. He happens to be one of the um, lead reporters, uh, I believe, at the Financial Times, and he, he does several other papers, too. He's a freelance reporter, and uh, we had a very nice uh, couple-hour conversation and a uh, nice lunch and everything, and, and Trevor was telling us that uh, in 2011, he had bought $1,000 worth of Bitcoin, and so this morning, I emailed him back. I said, did you ever sell the the Bitcoin? And he said, you know, he said, I got really lucky. He said, uh, my lovely wife wanted something special at Christmas time. And I had this $1,000 that I put away, and it was worth a lot of money. And so he said he sold it uh, right before Christmas. Uh, you know, the, the high came in actually at the end of January. If you remember, at around 19000 and change, he got out around... Uh, 16,000. So he was able to buy his lovely wife, the car of her dreams uh, over there in the UK. So uh, she was very, very happy. And uh, he said for a few weeks, he said he was re regretting it. And he said, now he seems like, you know, he was a, he just got very, very lucky. And he, and he was blessed to think that, uh, you know, that he was lucky. So that, that's what's, that's, what's really interesting about it. So we'll see. Anyway, it was a, he, she, he bought her the top of the line, um, uh, Mercedes Benz is what he bought her. So I just thought you'd let you know that. Of course, being, being in London, you'd think he'd have bought her a Bentley or a Rolls, but, um, he bought a Mercedes. Okay. Let's move on folks. The, the real, the real story here today, in my opinion, is the U S dollar index. That's the one. If we we'll put this up here, take a look at this was as of last Last night, I'll update this to you where the prices are right now. Oh, dear. I hope that posted. Just give me one second. Let me know if that U.S. dollar index chart posted. I I don't believe that it did. Let me get it up here so we can take a look. There we go. And you'll see here that we've, we're completing this ABCD pattern right now because we're trading above um, 95.50, I believe, right now. So we're cleaning out all those tops that we had here over the past uh, – the past few weeks so it's going to be really interesting what happens right in this area now what I'd like to do is to switch over uh, and this is something I don't do very often but this is such a critical level that we're looking at right here is switch over to the long-term weekly chart here on the US dollar index and take a look at it you'll notice that uh, this that area in that box is that same daily area that we were looking at right there that was at that 95 uh, 40 level so you see uh, that's near a 50% retracement of that of that whole move 
that we had back into this area. Now the $64 question is, are we going to be able to close above this uh, 90, 90, say 96 level? If we do that, you know, we are really uh, off to the races with the U.S. dollar. And that means that the euro is going to be, you know, heading down for a, a long summer to the downside would be the way I would be uh, sort of watching it. Now, if we take a look at the euro, and this is one that we were watching yesterday, if you, of course, if you'll remember, it had certainly had a bearish bias when it got up to that 117.30 uh, level. Uh, now what we've done is we've come down and we've touched the 78% level on the downside, exactly at uh, 115. Uh, 75. As long as we can stay above that, there's a chance that this thing has a chance to rally. But frankly, it's a very, very small chance. And that's what we'll see. Now, remember that the, we, we watch a lot of other currencies. We're seeing a big move that, that, that dollar yen is continuing to move higher that we thought was going to be the case because of the fact that it broke you know, to the upside and looked like it wanted to uh, continue higher. And it has certainly done that. We're trading, a, well, we're trading above the 113 level very easily, which means the next level to look at it would be rough, roughly the 114 level. So this is a big day that we're seeing here in foreign exchange. It's affecting everything. And of course, it's definitely affecting the, the gold and the, the silver market and also the platinum market. The platinum market went in and made new low grounds. The silver folks, Folks, we are very, very close in silver uh, to the long term. Let's just get this just to give you an idea of where we are here on a couple of these things. Just on your gold chart, let's put up this gold weekly. This comes from one of our uh, friends from over in the UK that does an awful lot of gold trading. And you'll notice he had some cycles here. Uh, that were that were lined up. These were these were 90 uh, 94 week cycles, 30 to excuse me, 30 week cycles. There's uh, four of them in there. Uh, one's due to come in. The 61 percent retracement on that whole move from December came in at uh, between 1218 and 1220. We've got down as low as 1210. That's not unusual for it to go below the numbers because usually they don't hit them perfect. They come really close. But when you got something that's trading at uh, uh, $12,000, uh, dollars $120, to come within, you know, even if you come within $1,000 of it, that's far less than 1%. The one that's really looking sick in this whole thing is the copper market. I mean, my goodness, the copper market, you know, once it started to break, I mean, this has been, uh, this has just been, you know, just straight down. There's, there's a, a tiny bit of support there at that 1.618 expansion at 262 a pound. But folks, we, we have come from 330 a pound, 331 a pound down to 260 a pound in a little over uh, four or five weeks. I mean, that's a, that, that's a uh, well, it's been, it's been a month. Yeah, well, five weeks. It's been five weeks, and we've dropped a, a great deal. Now, these markets are extremely oversold. And whether they're going to be related to what's happening with this U.S. dollar at this critical level and the euro at the critical level, I'm not sure. But uh, we're having a pretty big drop in gold and silver. Now, the gold is being influenced, of course, by what's happened in South Korea. South Korean uh, salvage team found a old Russian freighter from the, the early night World War I that uh, had roughly $150 billion worth of gold. Uh, too bad they didn't have found this back in... Uh, the, you know, in August of uh, 2011, it would have been worth a lot more. That's sort of tongue in cheek. We're going to be right back. We'll talk a little bit more about the gold and silver, especially the silver market. 877 927 The Taz Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the Taz Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner Plus right at TFNN.com. And when you sign up, you gain instant access to John Logan's most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profiles So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free. For more information on the Taz Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. 
Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance, David White's daily market letter, gives you trade recommendations based on David's proprietary power law vector indicator that put the odds of success overwhelmingly in your favor. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price for each stock and option trade. David combines his years of trading experience along with his background in technology and computing to offer his subscribers his take on the markets on a daily basis. Every trading day by 9.30, David publishes his morning issue of the Path of Least Resistance, along with updates sent out throughout the week whenever there is new, actionable trading information. All new subscribers receive a 30-day, no-questions-asked, money-back guarantee. To sign up for David White's daily trading newsletter right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com, and you'll find the Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Larry takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Okay, folks, I posted the chart, uh, the long-term chart in the silver that we've been watching that gives a uh, price objective right around $15.10 per ounce. We're not very far away. We're within a few minutes of that. If the market starts to break again without any trouble at all, we could certainly uh, do that. Now, what we've done so far in the silver, you'll notice here that we are looking at a situation. We'll put up the uh, little bit. Uh, I have the euro chart up. I know here I had the euro chart. That was an accident, Marshall. Sorry about that. Anyway, you'll notice here on the silver, this is uh, was up to date about an hour ago. Uh, we got down to, I believe, 15.25 might be the low, but you can see that's below that 1.618 expansion. The ABCD structure measures right down to about 15, uh, pretty close to 15.10, I believe the actual number is. Uh, the number we were looking at in the goal was somewhere around 12.18 to 12.20, and both of those have been broken. Now, that could be related to that German ship, but uh, excuse me, the Russian ship, but whether that's the case or not. The important thing, and this is something that I mentioned uh, in the videos that I put out this week on the uh, the gold and silver, that you what you really have to watch, and let's just take a quick look at it here, is what's happening over at the CME as far as the open interest. And this is uh, yesterday, this was uh, as of yesterday, you can see the gold gold futures there. I've marked them in green and I pointed that green arrow. That was the increase. Uh, basically, that was a 1% increase in open interest. So prices are going down with open interest increasing. That means the shorts are in control. And uh, that means that there's no indication that they have any fear at all in these markets. Now, if we take a quick look at the silver market, we'll bring this up so you can take a quick look at it. This also is directly coming you know, by the C, by the same um, from the same place, the CME. You'll notice that I marked that green arrow there to show you that the silver futures also had an increase in open interest, and also they went down. You notice that the open interest in the uh, silver is around 213, and your open interest in your in your gold is about three times that. So. You can see why gold is a much better speculative vehicle to see what's going on. We're in it incredibly oversold now uh, in these, and that we're down at these really long-term levels. The level that we're looking at here in the silver folks is a 78% level within just about, I think, about 10 cents on the long-term weekly chart in silver. Uh, as I recall, that was exactly you know, what we were watching, whether it's going to be. Let's just double-check here. Maybe I've got that listed on here. 
Uh, I don't think I do. Yeah, well, that's the gold monthly. No, that's it might be close. Hold on, just give me a second here. Maybe I've got it here. Nope, I don't have the silver. I had the longer term gold, but I didn't have the uh, the silver. So we'll see uh, if that's going to the case. Now, someone's asked the question whether this is related to those tariffs, folks. I do not believe that at all. Gold's been going down uh, since uh, you know about five, six, six weeks ago. It's been going long before the tariffs. So I don't think it has anything to do with the tariffs. It's basically, um, you know, people that are on the short side have been right. And, uh, you know, this is, uh, this is where we were starting to look. This was the week for looking to find the bottom. And uh, when we didn't see that bottom yesterday, we came very, very close to it yesterday. It didn't do, didn't do very much. And then with the open interest increasing like it did, that was a sign that possibly that we were looking at another – uh, more, more to the downside, and there's, there could be more coming too. The 1210 level in the gold is a very important level, uh, just just based on uh, uh, on percentage below the Fibonacci number. In other words, if you get more than ten dollars below a Fibonacci number or ten dollars above a Fibonacci number, and the Fibonacci number here we're looking at is around, let's say, 1218, that is usually telling you that it wants to go you know, a great deal, a great deal lower. So we'll see if this is going to be close to the time. Now, um, we do have some astrological things, whether they affect gold or not, I'm not actually sure, but we still should pay attention to it here because this is a, a spot where we're extremely oversold uh, in the, but listen, we were oversold in the grain markets too, if you remember, and we went down, you know, a great deal uh, lower. So just keep in mind that that's what we're watching. Now we got some really a really nice chart here from uh, our good friend Dennis Gartman was kind enough to uh, send it on to us. Uh, it comes from uh, you know Goldman Sachs, and I just wanted to bring this up to show you. Then I'll I'll try to give you an example of what he was trying to say. This is the uh, the ten stocks that contribute more than 100 percent of the S and P's year to date return, and you can see you're looking at Amazon, Microsoft, Apple, Netflix. I mean, these are the Fang stocks, but you can see these ten stocks. You know, they they they're they're running the whole show, and and we see that, and when we watch the market, because if you look at the New York Stock Exchange Index, which is the you know the really broad market, 2,300 of the most uh, highly liquid and most uh, highly capitalized stocks that we have listed of the 8,000 stocks that are listed across New York, uh, you, you'll notice that uh, they haven't even taken out the highs of June. And you can see the NASDAQ has gone up into new high ground as of yesterday, having a little bit of a correction today. But um, that's really what you're seeing. You're seeing a handful of stocks. And that's that's what I think it's that's really important. That's really what I think is you're seeing a, a rolling distribution that is being masked by, you know, some of the things that are that are going on. Oh, I found the silver chart. Let's get back to this silver here for just a second. It's amazing if I stumble around enough, I will find it. So we'll see. We'll get right here. And there we go here. All right. There we are. You'll notice that the ABCD structure on the silver uh, should take us down to just a tad under where we are right now, but it's very, very close. But we'll see whether it's going to. I do believe when we do get the rally, it's going to be, if we get one, it's going to be a big rally and scare the bejeebies out of some folks. But we'll, no, we don't know. A lot of this will be related to the U.S. dollar when you're dealing in the currencies because there's a, still a very strong correlation between the euro, you know, and the um, and the gold. Um, that's mainly because they're money, but we'll have to uh, watch them closely as we as we see this uh, unfold uh, going through here. Now, I wanted to cover a couple of things here before we get to the first break. Uh, one of the other markets that is having a, an interesting uh, uh, interesting spot here that we've been following that is the uh, Canadian dollar is weakening again. Uh, this is the U.S. dollar versus the Canadian dollar, and we've now cleared above that 132.60 level. Uh, be able to see um, someone. Oh, Mr. Z has asked me to talk a little bit about the um, September uh, E-mini chart, and I will be happy to do that when we come up to the break, Mr. Z, because I have to get that chart updated because I had the S&P chart updated. I did not have the uh, the other one updated. Well, I've got the daily, but I'll get to the smaller chart in just a minute. I'll put the daily up for us so you can see here that we got up. Uh, to that uh, 74, uh, we went a little above that 1.27 level, which was around 74.30, I believe. And I'll cover that when we come back from the break because I'll 
I'll break down that um, NASDAQ into an hourly chart uh, to give us an idea of, of some of the patterns that we're looking at in here. But the clear pattern, of course, was in that E-mini S&P because you notice we had the you know beautiful ABCD patterns up here that stopped you know right at that uh, 1218 level. I mean that was uh, right near the the level. Now instead of going 11 days up, of course, we went 13 days up because we were up yesterday too. So that made it 13 days higher as opposed to 11 days higher. This also happens to be a key cycle date for our our good friend Stan Harley. Uh, Stan, I believe, was looking for a low to come in. Uh, around July 19th, as I recall, and we've got a high. So when we come back, we're going to take apart the New York, uh, the NASDAQ uh, on the 60 and uh, 240 chart, and we'll take a look at that, see if we can make out any heads or tails. 877-927-6648. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, I've put the chart of the NASDAQ uh, 100 up with the, uh, with the hourly chart to let you take a look at it. But what I'd like for you to do, remember we were looking at that daily chart, I just wanted to show you the relationship of how close we came uh, to that 1.27 expansion up there at that 74 and change. So that's a very thing. Now, all we've done now is made a little ABCD pattern down here. In fact, we haven't even completed it yet. So we still haven't completed that. So I, nothing has really changed in that. So that's the main thing is just keep an eye on it because I don't think it it's going to mean a, a whole lot. So we'll watch it closely. Now, Steve Rhodes has just come up with some really good ideas here about the 
hold on one second, please, <clears throat> is about the, you know, Walmart buys a billion, uh, $1 billion worth of goods, I guess, each week from China, and they pay for it, of course, in the Chinese one, and the Chinese one has been really getting hit. We've gone from 6.2 to roughly 6.8 here, about a 5% drop here in the last month in the Chinese one, uh, and that means that, uh, you know, they're getting less money uh, you know, for their getting paid in less dollars. So it's hurting them, you know, quite a bit. Now, whether that's going to be a big thing or not, we'll have to we wait and see. Folk, what we're seeing about this trade stuff is not probably what's going on in the background. That's just my two cents worth. I don't know. I don't know anything about trade wars or anything like that, but it's pretty, uh, pretty amazing. I remember I first started going to China uh, to do some speaking back in 1996, and the yon, the one at that time was was uh, I believe right at just under 13, and of course it got all the way down to I think it hit it might have went below six for just a short period of time. But can you imagine? You know, if I if you were going there now, you would be paying less than half for everything that uh, you'd be uh, dealing with. I mean, it's it was really incredible. You could get a beautiful hotel room for 35 bucks, and you know it was just uh, it was truly amazing. But I. I have to share you my one of well, there's a lot of great uh, memories that I had going to China and all the wonderful sights that I saw and everything. But in June of uh, I believe was uh, yeah it was 2004 because 2004 was an amazing year because of Katrina. But um, that's when President Reagan passed away. Uh, when I was there and I was in the hotel and I saw it come across uh, the news, uh, you know that President Reagan had passed away. And the next day. On uh, Embassy Row in China, um, the Chinese um, uh, premier asked the, uh, the, uh, each of the countries to lower the flags at half-mast. France would not lower the flag. So China didn't say anything at all. All they did was they turned off the water and the electricity, and it was June, and it was hot. The next day, the flag went to half-mast. So that I remember. So we'll move on to the next one here and see what's going on. Okay, let's go on here and take a look at these. Um, someone's asked about the grain market. So far, the grains are holding up okay. We had a 40-cent rally in soybeans, about a 15-cent rally in corn. Nothing much, but at least it was rallying. It stopped dropping. Now, whether we can hold these key levels or not, you know, certainly remains to be seen, and that's the the key thing, you know, to be to be watching. So we'll we'll pay pretty close attention to that. Okay, now let's move on to a couple other of these markets that I wanted to talk about. I wanted to bring the uh, copper chart up one more time because it's it's at such a critical level here. We've broken down. You'll notice that when we were at that 61% retracement, which was the old high from February of uh, two years ago, uh, that was at uh, that was at the 282 level. From the 282 level, we rallied up to about 290, and then we just, you know, we fell completely out of bed. If you'll take a quick look at this uh, copper chart, just look at it very closely here over the last several weeks, you're you're going to see a three drive uh, to a bottom pattern forming right now. And that's going to be at the 262 level. I don't know how low copper has gotten so far, but the expansion numbers and everything come at 262. I would have liked to have seen it come in at that 1.618 level at 272, but the market doesn't always do what Larry wants it to do. So we're down here now at a three drive pattern at 262, and uh, that is going to be very, very interesting. So pay attention to that one because that is a market that is incredibly oversold. The problem is you really don't have any major ABCD move ever since, uh, you know, the end, uh, beginning of June. I mean, you're talking five weeks now. We've just been dropping faster and faster and faster. So we'll see what's uh, we'll see what's going to go on with some of these things, folks. I I know you. I know, I'm getting all kinds of act questions about the the trade wars. I'll say it one more time. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I really don't. I look at the prices. You know, the dollar, U.S. dollar has been strong for quite some time. You know, the, the euro has been screaming that it wanted to go down. I mean, you know, and uh, the Canadian was looking like it was weakening to the U.S. dollar and the yen was wanting to go up. So all of that stuff was pointing up. But we're at the proverbial moment of truth now uh, in this dollar index because it's really got to get moving and euro's got to really start breaking for it to go because we are at major support here as we come in here today. 
I mean, that's uh, that that's really really big time support. So sort of watch that because if that breaks, then you're going to see, you know, a lot of things happening. Now the stock market has not, you know, shaken off anything so far. I mean, we're only, you know, we're not even down. I think one percent from some of these places. So uh, that nothing looks different right here. So. Keep an eye on it. I don't know. That's one thing. We'll see what happens. But uh, that's it. Someone's asked about the cattle market. We've had a nice move in cattle. Uh, we were sort of expecting that. It, that acted pretty good. Yeah, the charts do speak pretty good sometimes, um, Marshall, but not always. You know, sometimes they don't always get what you want. Take a look at August cattle because they they uh, this was just as of a couple of days ago and they've gotten very strong since then. So th these are headed towards a little bit higher price. Now cattle are not affected by the tariffs. The uh, Chinese don't eat they eat some beef, but it's mostly chicken and pork, and uh, of course a lot of seafood. But that's the main thing. The hog market is still under pressure. It's trying to find a bottom down in here. Whether it's going to or not, you know, remains to be seen. So we'll we'll keep an eye on that one too. We'll have our friend Rich Anderson on next week, and along with uh, Stan Harley, and also we'll have uh, Bill Meridian on next week, you know, to get an update on on some of these cycles that appear to have uh, have inverted, especially uh, in the in the one uh, you know for the market going down. It just took off, and well. <laughs> It, the, the the Nasdaq went up and the I, and the IWM went up, but the others, you know, the Dow Jones did not go up that much, nor did the um, the S and P 500, the New York Stock Exchange Index. So those are the main ones, you know, that we follow all the time. The questions ask about the open interest, folks. The open interest is very easy to find. I'll I'll go over it again. I'll put this chart up here. This is what you're going to see when you go into the CME. You go to www.cme.com, and then you just click on the uh, the uh, group of products that you want. Like this happens to be the metal. So you click on metals, and it'll give you all the metals, and you scroll down to the gold futures. Now you can see the E-mini silver futures. They have an open interest of 76, or, or excuse me, 377. So uh, you don't want to be trading E-mini copper as an open interest of 79. You know, the, the, the copper futures themselves have an open interest of 307,000. But if you'll notice on the right there, that green arrow shows that the increase for the gold futures yesterday was 1%, which is pretty close to uh, the 533. And that tells you open interest went up, prices went down, the shorts are in control. 877-927-6648. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank Bank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. TFNN has put together the finest programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast eight hours a day starting at 9 a.m. as Larry Pesavento kicks us off with Trade What You See. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour following the Tom O'Brien Show. Swim lessons from TD Ameritrade Thicker Swim is now at 11 a.m. followed by Basil Chapman at 12 noon. 
See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts. And keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, brought to you by Nadex, next on TFNN. Okay, we're back, folks, and I wanted to put the chart up of the Christmas corn. You see we had that three drive to a bottom pattern that formed last week, and it's had a pretty good rally. The next one I wanted to bring it to your attention, of course, is the November soybeans because uh, it had even a clear ABCD pattern on the daily chart uh, that ended down there at the uh, 826 level. And, of course, we rallied up to 865. We're trading at around 860, I believe. Uh, so far this morning. So there's a possibility we could have a, a rally in here. Now, realize that the market has gone from 1060 uh, down to uh, 830. That's a $11,000 drop in soybeans, folks. For the farmer that did not hedge up there at the 1060 level, uh, you know, that's a, that's a pretty big, that's a pretty big uh, hit. But as our good friend Cy Monley has talked to us many times, uh, these farmers are very, very sophisticated now, and they have people like Cy that are monitoring what they're doing for farming being a business. That doesn't mean they still can't speculate, but when their crop is up there at you know $10 a bushel, they know they're going to make X number of dollars. They are re basically pretty much required by the bank to hedge that crop so that they get their money for it, and then when it comes in, they pay that loan off, and, uh, you know, that makes a huge difference. So this has not affected some of these farmers very much. There are some that will be affected, but remember, some of these guys are, uh, you know, they're very big boys. They played in this game before, so don't worry about them too much. Hey, we got a call from uh, Oakland, California. John, are you there? Yeah, this is Oakland, Michigan, Larry. Oh, well, it says Oakland, California here. Somebody yeah, messed I, that I, up. That's, well, that's I, close I, yeah. enough. It's in the United States. What's close up, my enough. friend? Larry, I love your show. Listen to you every day. Thank, thank you so much. I'll send a tweet. Go ahead. Well, hey, you've been talking about trade wars in China. I want to point you to a gentleman by the name of John Batchelor. Have you ever heard of John Batchelor? I've heard of him. Yes, I have. He, he has a radio show, and he, uh, I listen to his podcast, and he has a co-host by the name of Gordon Chang, C-H-A-N-G, and Gordon is a very yep. famous China expert in the U.S. Yep, yep he's and on TV all the time. They just interviewed last night uh, Professor Arthur Waldron from the University of Pennsylvania, who's one of the foremost China experts in academia. And what Professor Walden said was this, and this goes along with who's winning the trade war. First off, the strongman of the country, Xi Jinping, has not been seen now in about a week. And they say that is extremely surprising. When, some, when, he, when a guy like this disappears off the radar screen, something oh is happening under the surface. Another thing that's happening is people are now going around uh, the big cities and defacing the portraits of uh, Xi Jinping and other famous Chinese luminaries. So what the experts are saying is that there is something going on in China because of what Donald Trump is doing. They don't know how to deal with Donald Trump. Uh, they don't know what to do. 
and you had mentioned Walmart mm -hmm. uh, buying a million dollars worth of product. Was it a day or a week? Did you say a billion a, a week? Yeah, a week, which is dropping the price of that yuan, which is bringing in less profit. And what they're saying is that China, as a mafia state, is basically a mafia state. Okay, that these mm -hmm. industries that they con that they're trying to control are all run by gangsters. And they're all starting to feed on one another. They're all getting paranoid as to whether am I going to be able to hold on to my position? Am I going to be able to hold on to my land, to my kids over in foreign schools? What am I going to do? Oh, wow. How is this going to fall out? There could be a revolution brewing in China right now that's not being reported. So I would recommend that your, your uh, listeners listen to the Wednesday, July 18th podcast, mm -hmm. uh, the John Bachelor Show on China and uh, get, get some insight on what's going on over there. Well, that, that is great information to have. I, as far as Gordon Chang, he's on, he's on Bloomberg and CNBC quite yeah. often. I've had a great deal of respect for him. I was on a panel with him, oh, guys, seven, eight, well, more than that, about 12 years ago. And yeah. uh, he is really, uh, well, of course, he's being Chinese, so he should know what he's talking about. But uh, <laughs> there, might, there might be something to that. I hadn't noticed the fact that he's been, you know, basically not in the news for a while, not even saying anything. But there's a, there's a lot of things uh, political in China that we are not privy to, of course. And, uh, you know, whether that could be, you know, something like that, I don't know. Frankly, I didn't see many Italians over there, if you want to know the truth, uh, John. They're, they might not have been. I think there are more Irishmen over there than there were Italians. <laughs> well, yeah, Lee, right? Lee's yeah, a famous did, last name, right? Yeah, I did see a couple people that looked like Al Capone, but I don't remember where they were, as a matter of fact. So yeah, right. I've, I've really loved going to China uh, all those years. Uh, gosh, I went three times a year for so many years. I Gosh, I was able to see you know quite a bit of it but it was really an incredible country and I, I i you know i don't think there'd ever be a chance that we would ever go to war with them for god knows whatever reason but um anybody gets a chance to go there to visit it's it's really worth it they've got all the beautiful things that we have here in the united states they've got their own grand canyons and all the other stuff but boy it's a very old culture boy and you're talking thousands of years and yeah. Really great. Hey, listen, thanks for calling in, my friend, and I'll try to remember. Well, where is Oak, Where is Oakland, Michigan? Where is Oakland it? Oakland is outside of Detroit. It's a, oh, okay. a small town. It's a bedroom community about 30 miles north of Detroit. Beautiful place. It, well, thank you for calling richest, in. The richest township in the country. So. Well, uh, if you listen to TFNN, you have to be, right? You got it. You got That's it. That's it. Hey, listen, thank thanks you, for calling, and I appreciate the kind words, John. All righty. Thanks, Al. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay, and uh, it's very interesting to hear that uh, summary of what could be going on. You know, folks, I've said all along, and I, you know, I, I just look at the charts, but the charts are saying that, you know, this thing is not nearly as bad as uh, people are telling us. You know, I don't know. I mean, they started with $50 billion with the tariffs. Now they're up to $200 billion of tariffs, but, you know, who knows? All I know is if you ever go to China, the number of times you're going to see a U.S. car, you can count on one hand. I mean, believe me, you'll see an old Buick, you'll see a, an old Lincoln or something like that, but you're not going to see any Corvettes, you're not going to see any, you'll see some Porsches, you'll see some Ferraris, but you're not going to see many U.S. cars, believe me. Now, if you go to Cuba, you're going to see all kinds of U.S. cars. The problems are going to be from the 1950s. So uh, these tariffs that they have on some of these cars is really not fair, especially look, look at Hong Kong, folks. If you buy a car in Hong Kong, you pay 100% tariff. Did you know that? So if you buy a, a $150,000 Mercedes, you pay three hundred dollars for it. And it's going to cost you $60,000, $70,000 a year to park the car. So you better, uh, you must really love cars because that's pretty much what it costs. In London this past year, we happened to know someone that, that brought us to our attention, our good friend uh, Ziggy over there, Ziggy and Mara. They're investment bankers with one of the large banks. Uh, there was a uh, apartment right near where they live, and uh, they had an, a, a parking spot for a car was sold. This was a covered, like a little mini garage. It, it sold for... $500,000 to, to park a car. Now, that's a lot to park a car. <laughs> so we'll, we'll see uh, what's happening. Uh, the main thing about this Chinese renminbi being up to where it is here, we're about 
uh, th this, there's something big going on over there, but what it is, I don't know. Maybe our friend from uh, John, if he hears any more, he'll call in and give us some more information. 877-927-6648. Aerobics Cube offers more than 100 million starting positions, resulting in 43 billion potential twists and turns. Yet this puzzle can be solved in 20 moves. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, and knowing the right move makes all the difference in the world. And on Thursday, July 19th at 4.15 p.m., I'll share with you the three essential tools behind my number one ranking by Timer Digest for the S&P 500. This 30-minute event is being hosted by Ninja Trader, and it's open to everyone in our listening audience. At this event, I'll share with you the Rhodes Momentum Indicator Signal that subscribers and I used to identify tops and bottoms, as well as Stevie's red line and the market profiles that I use. The sign-up link is on the homepage of TFNN.com and requires nothing more than your name and email address. To help celebrate my number one market timing ranking, we're making Mastering Probability available to anyone in our listening audience for the next 30 days with a free money-back guarantee, whether you've subscribed in the past or not. Make your move now by coming to the homepage of TFNN.com and sign up for Thursday's workshop, as well as my free newsletter trial offer. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the X. SAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for the Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find the Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, I posted the chart, updated chart of that hourly NASDAQ. As you can see, we rallied up to a 61% retracement exactly from the previous lower high. Uh, that sets up that ABCD pattern that we posted a little bit earlier. We also got some great information here from one of our listeners here at TFNN. It's one of the advantages of being that TFNN den. You got some really smart people out there, and they check all these stories. And the shipwreck story out of South Korea, it was more like $8 billion and not $120 billion as reported. So maybe the folks... Uh, forgot to short the material when it was up there uh, at $1,900 an ounce. But anyway, uh, that's another advantage that you have here at TFNN is you got some really smart people that give you some, you know, really, uh, really good information. And as you know, be careful. Trade what you see, you know, not what you think or hear, because it's what that chart is doing that really makes the, the market move. Remember, the key thing to look at here is this 115.70 level in the euro. We get below that. That means that that dollar index is going to be really close to 96. And if it breaks and closes above 96, folks, it's going to be awfully hard to pull it down. So as we mentioned in that weekly 
chart for the dollar index, it is at the proverbial moment of truth. So this is going to be interesting and see whether it can hold this uh, level on the breakout. It should be able to do it because the longer term chart in the euro is relatively uh, negative, but uh, kind of keep an eye on it as we uh, look through some of these things uh, through here. If we close badly today uh, in the NASDAQ, you know, the NASDAQ down about 100, the Dow down more than 250, that will be a sign that that E mini SP chart that we started the show with today was uh, pretty close to being uh, right. Remember, this was a, a strong cycle day for our good friend um, Stan Harley. We'll put this up. We'll finish the show to take a look it up here because we're trading. Uh, we're up. Actually, we took 13 days to get to that high. The other one took 11 days, but it did complete that ABCD. So 877-927-6648. folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFN and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the X. XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the Taz Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner Plus right at TFNN.com. And when you sign up, you gain instant access to John Logan. Logan's most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profiles So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free. For more information on the Taz Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This is TFNN, the Tiger Financial News Network. TFNN, headline news update. Here's Tom O'Brien. 
Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN headquarters in Clearwater, Florida, 10 a.m. on Thursday, 30 minutes into the trading day. And we're off to the races to the downside across the board, pretty much on all the major indices. You get the Dow negative 135 points trading at 25,064. S&P is currently negative by 13, trading at 28.02, and the NASDAQ negative by 36, trading at 78.18. So we start things off. Let's take a look at the VIX this morning. Volatility index climbing a bit as we see some negative market action. VIX 12.51 so far. Let's jump over to the Nadex platform, check in on some of those futures markets. So we were negative coming into the market open, got a little bit of a bid up till 9.30, but then quite a sell-off, and that basically session lows across the board. Dow futures currently trading 25,048. NASDAQ 100, pretty similar story. 9.30, we spike higher, a short-lived acceleration. Within 10 minutes, we are back down trading lower and almost at session lows, about 73.68, the NASDAQ 100. S&P, similar story. Currently trading at 2803. It was up there around just after the open at 2812. Crude oil, quite a roller coaster. We were trading lower for most of the overnight session, reaching those lows at about 645 this morning of 6662. And from there, we're up almost a solid $2 in the price of crude, 6853 and climbing to session highs as we speak. Gold contract, not quite the acceleration. And the bid that gold, uh, excuse me, that crude oil got traded lower for most of the overnight session, bouncing a bit off those lows, but still gold struggling. 12.1699 in the yellow precious metal, and Bitcoin continuing to climb. Just spiked above 7,500 a few minutes ago. Currently trading 74.55, up a couple hundred dollars from where it was earlier in the session. In terms of what else you have happening this morning, fundamentally. Weekly, weekly jobless claims coming in at 207,000, the lowest level since 1969 as the economy marches on. You had IBM earnings last night. There are the numbers, the market liking those numbers this morning. We'll jump over to IBM's chart in a moment. $3.08 per share versus 304. Over our, well, I was going to say over 20 billion, over the expectation, but 20 billion. And then, of course, the big news this morning Comcast no longer pursuing Fox assets as Disney seems to win that one out. And to start it off with IBM. Big blue, quite an acceleration, up almost 4% today. And then you have Fox shares, whoops, Fox A, down because they lost a pursuer, Disney up, and CMCSA, we'll get it in there, Comcast up as well. Stay tuned, coming back here at 10 o'clock with Tom. Have a great Thursday.